mold. It's one of the worst surprises you can find in your bathroom, basement, or a basket of fruit. Do the scullard splotches of fungi known as molds are many things. Slimy, smelly, and under the right circumstances, deadly. Molds are fungi that grow by bunching together into a network of fiber-like structures called hyphae, and it's these structures that create the fuzzy-haired look of molds. Like all fungi, molds can exist pretty much anywhere in the world, so long as they have lots of organic matter to gorge on, enough warmth, and some humidity, and they can even grow inside people. The gross truth is that we constantly breathe in mold thanks to the airborne spores that they produce. Our immune system usually stops these spores from establishing a new base of operations. But ironically, if mold is making a person sick, it's usually because the immune system is overreacting, causing asthma and allergy. But molds are nothing if not opportunists. People who have weakened immune systems, such as those living with HIV or organ transplant recipients, molds can infect and take root inside the body. And these infestations can turn fatal. A common source of these infections is some species of the mold Aspergillus, which can be found everywhere, but especially in dead leaves, soil, and plants. More than half of people with an weakened immune system who contract Aspergillus will die from it. In these people, the mold often spreads from the lungs to the rest of the body, all the while feeding on and eventually killing off the body's tissues. Even when it doesn't spread wildly, the infection can cause massive inflammation in the lungs that causes the organ to shut down. And in people who have gotten bone marrow transplants, the death rate is more like 90%. It's not only the molds themselves that can be harmful to us, but what they spew out with the foods we eat. There are at least six major toxins produced by mold and fungi that can end up in our food and affect our health. These toxins have killed and sickened thousands of people throughout history. But in one of the scary ones, made by the ergot fungus, could even drive people mad and cut off blood circulation to the limbs and skin, causing gangrene. Nowadays, People in developed countries like the U.S. usually don't have to worry about mass mold poisonings, thanks to food safety practices that prevent excess mold from entering the food supply. But people weren't always so lucky. In 1974, one of these toxins, called aflatoxin, killed over 100 people in western India. More recently, in 2004, a major outbreak in Kenya killed at least 200 people. And while a big enough dose of aflatoxin is enough to kill someone quickly, usually by destroying the liver, it's also a potent carcinogen in smaller doses. A 2010 study found that alpha toxins may help cause anywhere from 5 to 28% of liver cancer cases worldwide. Of course, while molds can be a serious health risk, they're not all bad. Without molds and their toxins, for instance, we wouldn't have penicillin, blue cheese, or even some kinds of wine. And molds and fungi in general are one of nature's compost machines, helping the ecosystem heal and renew itself. Still, while house mold usually isn't a grave threat, you can help prevent it by using a dehumifier in problem areas like the basement, keeping your plant collection to a minimum, and plugging up any plumbing leaks. 